So, if you didn't get the assignment yesterday, make sure you get it copied down, please. All right, so here it is. Okay, so first things first. We've got number eight. What does number eight ask you to do? Okay, so graph the function and then compare it against the parent function, right? Y equals X, which we talked about yesterday. So what's the equation that they want you to graph? Negative 3X plus 2. Okay, how do you want me to graph this? Do you want to graph it with a table or slope-intercept? Which method do you all prefer? Slope-intercept? Okay, so if, in order to graph in slope-intercept, what variable has to be isolated? No. Y. Is Y by itself up here? Okay, so it's already in slope-intercept form. So somebody tell me, what's my M? Negative 3, and we always want to write it as a fraction, right? So it's negative 3 over 1, and what's my B? 2. All right, so let me get set up here. So when I graph in this format, what's the first thing that I graph, M or B? B, and what does B stand for again? That's the what? Y-intercept. So... I go to this value on the y-axis, right? So where is 2 on the y? How do I get there? Okay, so where do I start? 0 and then go up 2. All right, so here's one point that is guaranteed to be on my line, right? Now I use my slope. What is the slope? Okay, down 3 over to the right 1. And where do I start counting from, the origin or from my dot? From the dot. 1, 2, 3 over 1. Do I need a third point? Not really, but it wouldn't hurt to put it on there, right? So again, from this point, go down three, go over one. Grab your ruler. There's your line. Okay, so that's the first part done. They said graph the function. And then they said they want you to compare it against the parent function, right? So to do that, so that way I can point out some stuff, uh, let me actually put the parent function on here. Oops, uh, let me change the color of that in a minute here. Uh, there we go. That looks a little bit better. Okay. So if I asked you to compare the red line to the black line, right? So how did I make this black line look like the red line? What had to change in order to make that happen? So there's a couple of different changes happening, right? How do I get from here to here? What did I have to change? I had to slide the, the line which way, up or down? Up, right? Because we're, going, we're starting with the black line. How do I get to the red line? Okay, so we're going to actually shift up two. Is everybody okay with that? Because the y-intercept is changing, right? The y-intercept here is two, but what's the y-intercept of the uh, parent function? Zero. So in order to get that, I have to shift up two. Everybody right with that? Yes, sir. Yep. So, like, what I'm going to write right here is what I want you to put in. Okay? So this is the comparison part. Everybody all right with that? Okay, so what else changed? Okay, is the red line more steep or less steep? More, right, which makes sense because this slope is bigger than one, right? Okay, so what do we call if the line is more steep? Is that vertical stretch or horizontal stretch? Vertical stretch. So we have a vertical stretch going on, right, which makes the line more steep which means that the slope, the absolute value of the slope is bigger than 1, right? And then what else changed? What's the slope of this line, positive or negative? Positive. What about the red line? Negative. So we inverted the, the slope, right? So um, there's a lot of different ways you can phrase that. You can just say uh, our slope is now negative or something like that. I'm going to put in inverted slope. Okay. And that means instead of it being increasing, it's decreasing. It depends. There might only be one change, right? Like yesterday, what we looked at was, uh, um, here, let me show you. This one. No. Where is it? There we go. Right? You have your parent function, something like that, and then this one moves like that, right? 
the slopes are still exactly the same, so there's no horizontal stretch or vertical stretch, right? The only thing that changed is we take the parent function and graphed it up, moved it up three units. So that'd be the only thing that you'd put down. The only change was, yeah, move up three. Okay, so it really depends on each graph, okay? So there might only be one thing that you need to put down, or there might be up to three, but there won't be more than that. Okay? Everybody all right with that connection? Yes? No? Maybe? Um, for eight, right, it's six, seven, eight are the only ones that you have to do this with. Okay, and eight should be the most difficult one, and that's why it's got all three parts. All right, so everybody have this written down who needs it for their notes? Yes? And it's 16 a graphing problem? Yeah? Okay, then let me start off with... So for number 16, what do they tell you? Five over four X plus one. Okay. So first of all, have you seen this symbol before? Yeah. Does anybody remember how to read it? Okay. You use the word of. Okay. So this is F of X. What the F stands for is just function. Okay. So this is pronounced and it's full term function of x, which means that we're going to have an equation, and x is the independent variable. That's all it's really saying. So what variable do we usually use in its place? Y. So this is the same thing as y equals negative 5 fourths x plus 1. Is everybody okay with that connection? Yes? No? Maybe? Okay. So is y isolated? Okay, so this is in slope-intercept form, right? So to graph it, what are the two pieces I need? Okay, for my m is negative 5 over 4, and what's my b? Okay. So now how do I graph it? Okay, so I start with my b, right? So on the y, I find positive 1 on my y, and I put a point. From there, what do I use? Okay. Right. Everybody okay with that? Yes? No? Now, if you want to put a third point, do I really have room for a third point on here? Not going this way. Right. So if my slope is negative, I only need one negative direction, right? So if I go down, that's a negative direction for the Y. So I go positive direction on the X, which is to the right. Or I could go up, which is a positive direction on the Y, and then go which way? Negative on the X, which is to the left. So I'd go one, two, three, four, five, and then go four, to the left. Everybody good with that? Yes? All right. And then I'm going to kind of cheat on this one. Whoops. It'd help if I picked the right thing. You and that color. Okay. So there is your graph. Any questions on graphing out of slope intercept form? Yes or no? Moving on. Uh, 25. Is this another graphing one or no? What are they asking you to use? Okay, does it say then graph it or just find the X and Y and stuff? All right, cool. So that means that I don't have to set anything up. And what's the equation for 25? Equals negative 10. Oh, sorry, negative 15. Okay. So when we're trying to find intercepts, which format do we want? Do we want slope-intercept form or do we want standard form? Standard form. Do I have standard form? Yes. Remember, standard form is AX plus BY equals C, which is what I'm looking at, okay? So, if I wanted to find X-intercept, Y-intercept. Okay, now, first of all, your intercepts always need to be listed as a point, okay? Intercepts are not just values, they're points. So, X-intercept, what does that mean? That's where the graph does what? crosses which axis, if it's an x-intercept? x-axis, right? So if you're anywhere on the x-axis, what do we know about y? What's the y-value anywhere on the x-axis? Zero. So this is where I'm going to put in a zero for y. Everybody okay with that, yes or no? So if I put in a zero for y here, what's five times zero? Zero. So you can use what's called the cover-up method, where you actually just cover up that piece, right? If I put in a zero for y, the entire y term goes away. So what do I have to do to get x by itself? Hmm? 
no, X, because Y is gone, right? If I put in a zero for Y, so if I put in a zero for Y, the entire term goes away. So I'm actually going to cover it up physically. Okay, so what do I have to do to get X by itself now? It is by itself, right? So what is X equal to? Negative 15. So that is the coordinate to your x-intercept. Your x-intercept is negative 15, 0. Everybody okay with that, yes or no? So where, when do y-intercepts happen? When, when it crosses the y-axis, right? So what's the x-coordinate anywhere on the y-axis? 0. So y-intercepts happen when x equals 0. Everybody okay with that? Yes, no, maybe? Okay, so this time, what is becoming a zero, the X term or the Y term? X. So, cover up the X term. What do I have to do to get Y by itself? Divide by 5. What's negative 15 divided by 5? There's your intercepts. Done and done. That's it. Everybody okay with that? You think, maybe? Joy, did I wind up answering your question or no? Yeah, so what's weird is an x-intercept, the zero is for y, okay? That's where people make a mistake on this. As you go x-intercept, so the x has to be a zero. Right, but x-intercept means that it can be anywhere on the x. So it can be any value for your x piece, but the y has to be a zero, so you're actually on the x-axis, okay? So it's a little counterintuitive, so please make sure you have that written down in your notes for what, that way when you take your quiz later in the week, like in two days, you have it on your cheat sheet. <clears throat> okay. Everybody good with that? Yes? No? Maybe? Bo -bo -bo -bo. All right. Moving on. Bo -bo -bo -boom. All right. What's 28 say? Okay. Same thing, right? So let me get my stuff written out here. X intercept. Y intercept. And, you know, I hate it when teachers, like, go against what's in the book. I don't remember if this book stresses that x-intercepts and y-intercepts are uh, points. I think it just, like, if you look up the answers in the back of the book, it'll be, like, x-intercept 3, y-intercept 5. That doesn't work for me, okay? I want you to recognize that they're points, they're values. They're somewhere on the graph, so you need both coordinates. Everybody okay with that? So if you just put x-intercept of 3, you're going to lose half your points. Okay, it's not 3, it's 3 comma 0. I want to see it. So that way you can show me that you're understanding what the x-intercept gesundheit actually stands for. So, x-intercept, which coordinate is 0 for an x-intercept? The y. Which coordinate is 0 for a y-intercept? X. Okay, let me get my little box. Box. Whoop. All right. So for the x-intercept, which coordinate goes to zero again? Y. y. So the entire y term goes away. So what do I have to do to get x by itself? So what's 20 divided by 4? 5. Everybody good? Okay, for the, x, for, sorry, for the y intercept, what do I put in for x? Zero, so I cover it up, right? Okay, so now what do I do to get y by itself? Other way. Divide 20 by negative 5. Okay? So what do you get? Negative 4. All right? Everybody good with that? Yes? No? Maybe. All right. So everybody good with X and Y intercepts now? Yeah? All right. 33. What does number 33 say? And I want you to just graph it. Okay. X equals 4. How many variables do you see? One. So if we only have one variable in play, what does that mean the line has to be? What, what of two options? It's either, okay, that's for slopes. What, are, what do we call the line types? It's either vertical line or horizontal line, right? Everybody good with that? So that's the first key that you should be looking for. How many variables do I have? One variable means it's either vertical or horizontal, right? So if it's x equal to number, is that a vertical line or is that a horizontal line? Vertical for x, right? Because it's going to cut at x equals 4. So when I make my graph here, so how do I graph x equals 4? So you said it's a vertical line, and where is it going to cut the x-axis at? 
at four. So I go to four on the X, right? One, two, three, four. Regardless of my Y value, what's my X value always going to be? Four. So if I want more points to make sure I'm accurate, you go up and down at X equals four, right? Because I'm all about cheating, apparently. There we go. There's your line. Now are we done? What else did it say to do? Okay, so intercepts. Intercepts happen when two things crisscross. In particular, when you have just one line, intercepts happen when we cross an X and or a Y axis. So does this graph cut an X axis or a Y axis? X, where at? At four, right? So it says just label the intercept. So we have an intercept right there. Everybody good? And that's it. So any questions on that, that last section? Yes, no? So remember when you're graphing, because we get so used to just assuming that things are going to look the exact same way all the time, right? Remember, you've got two options when you, before you graph. You have to identify whether the graph is a skew line or if it's going to be uh, vertical horizontal, okay? And you determine that by the number of variables the equation has. If there's two variables, it's a skew line, and that's where you're going to deal with slope intercept form and all that. If there's just one variable, it's either vertical or horizontal, okay? So please keep that in the back of your mind when you're working through problems, so that way when you get to a quiz, you don't accidentally graph the wrong line type, like graph a horizontal line when there's two variables, okay? That's mathematically impossible. On the homework that you want to see done or any questions you still have? Okay, yeah. Uh, what's the equation? Okay, 2x. Okay, and so how many variables do you see? Two. So is this a skew line or is this going to be a vertical horizontal? So that's your first step, which skew. Yep. So this is a skew line. What format are we looking at? Is this slope intercept or standard? Standard, right? Because y is not isolated. So there's two ways you can do this, all right? Two paths diverged in a wood, right? You can choose. You can either get y by itself here and convert this into slope-intercept form and then use the slope and the, the y-intercept, or you can do what's called the quick graph, which is where you use just the intercepts, okay? I'm going to do this with the intercepts because to me it's super-duper easy, okay? So make an x-y chart. Y-intercept is when x equals 0. X-intercept is when y equals 0, right? Plug in a 0 for x. What happens to this term? It goes away, right? So how do you get y by itself? Divide by negative 6. What's negative 12 divided by negative 6? Positive 2. That's done, right? Put in a 0 for y. What happens to this term? Goes away. How do I get x by itself? Divide by 2. What's negative 12 divided by 2? Negative 6. All right, so as far as our points go, right? 0, 2. There's one point. Negative 6, 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's another point. What do I do with the two points? Just connect the dots. There we go. Are you going to be... Come on. Okay, okay. Easy computer. And there's your graph. Done and done. Okay? So when it's given to you in standard form, feel free to use the intercepts like that and do the quick graph, right? Or if you want to, get y by itself. So you're going to subtract the 2x, divide by negative 6, reduce everything down. Uh, did it say to label the intercepts? Oh, okay. It's the same. Yeah. So this time, how many intercepts do I have? I have two, right? I have an x-intercept and a y-intercept. So label it as x intercept and y intercept. Sorry, I, I ignored that part of the directions, y'all. All right, so make sure that you label your intercepts. X intercept, y intercept, because this one is a skew line, so it has two intercepts. Yes, Rachel.
once we graph it, we just look to see where is it crossing the x-axis and where is it crossing the y-axis. Yeah, is that for this problem set? That should be like this, right? Okay. So x-intercepts happen when y equals 0, and y-intercepts happen when x equals 0. So all we do is we plug the 0 in for our y, right, which means that I can cover up that entire block, because, like, what's 5 times 0? Zero? 0, so it's like it's not even there, right? So if I gave you 4x equals 20 and I said solve for x, what would you have to do to get x by itself? Right, just divide by 4, right? So what's 20 divided by 4? And that's your x-intercept done. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. And then for the y-intercept, you're going to put a 0 in for x, which means that the – hey, stop it – which means that this piece goes away, the x piece goes away. So now how would you get y by itself there? Right, divide by the negative 5, right, which is how we got negative 4. There's a 1 in front of them. Okay, so that's going to be a little bit tricky. You might want to actually write it in. So, like, if it's x minus y equals, what does it equal? 4. Put in a 1 here and here. Okay. But, yeah, remember, if they give you a variable with nothing written in front of it, there's always a 1 there. Okay, anything else? You feeling all right? All right, so you got 15 minutes to finish up your homework. All right, so let's get her done. If you don't get it done today, it's due tomorrow at the beginning of class. Tomorrow is quiz review day. Okay, so again, here's your homework if you need it. Okay. If so, please uh, get it copied down. And as always, the problems are from the Algebra 2 Michigan edition by McDougall Littell.